Hello, my name is James McAllister. I'm a senior lecturer in philosophy of education at the University of Edinburgh. For the next few minutes, I'd like to talk with you about a paper I've written that's recently been published in the Journal of Philosophy of Education. The paper's called On the Potential of Film for Ethics Education in Defence of Educational Ethicism. There are a couple of things about this paper that I want to highlight to you. Firstly, I think that one of the main things that the paper does is to make a contribution to a long-standing debate within philosophical aesthetics about the question of whether or not art with moral themes can be enhanced at the aesthetic level or the artistic level by the ways that the, the moral themes or issues are depicted in the artwork. There are some autonomists who hold uh, that art with moral themes uh, is not enhanced at the aesthetic level by the moral themes in the artwork. This is because art should be judged according to aesthetic or artistic criteria and any moral themes that are explored in an artwork are, are not related to the artistic and aesthetic value of the artwork. Art should be judged according to artistic criteria, not moral criteria. There are others who hold, uh, and people like Beres Gott and, and Noel Carroll spring to mind here, that holds a different view that in some cases, some artworks uh, can appropriately be, be judged as having aesthetic value in virtue, or additional aesthetic value perhaps, in virtue of the way that moral themes are explored within the artwork. And my paper engages critically with the ethicism of Beres Gott. Beres Gott's theory of ethicism runs something like this, that when an artwork has a moral merit in it that's communicated by artistic means, then this will invariably be not just a moral merit, but also an aesthetic merit of that artwork. Conversely, when an artwork has a moral flaw in it that's communicated or represented via artistic means, then this will invariably be a moral and artistic uh, or aesthetic flaw in that artwork. So I'm sympathetic to the first claim of ethicism, but in my paper I defend an alternative theory, educational ethicism, that, that runs a little bit differently to Gott's and I engage with some problems that have been highlighted in, in Gott's ethicism and I try to overcome them with the theory that I defend in the paper Educational Ethicism, which runs something like this, that an artwork that has potential to dispose an actual or possible audience to gain an ethical understanding will in will uh, have additional aesthetic value in virtue of this if the potential to dispose an actual or possible audience to gain an ethical understanding is contained within the aesthetic structure of the artwork. So it's important to stress here that no actual audience needs to be uh, ethically educated by the artwork in question for this additional aesthetic value to accrue, but there needs to be some sort of identifiable aesthetic property within the artwork that has potential to dispose uh, an audience to gain an ethical understanding. If an audience is ethically educated by the artwork, then that's obviously going to be a good thing from my point of view. The second part of the paper and the second thing that I want to highlight considers the question of whether or not um, a specific medium film might be relatable to this uh, theory of educational ethicism. And I document three ways that I think that films can have potential to ethically educate the audience in ways that can also add to the aesthetic value of the films that I'm exploring and, and thinking about in the paper. So the first way that I think film has potential to ethically educate the audience is through the moral growth of the audience. And the idea is, is a fairly simple one. That if a film depicts a moral character growing in the film, then perhaps the audience can also grow with the moral co character. They can learn from the character in the film's moral growth. And I discuss the growth 
of Phil Connors in the film Groundhog Day to exemplify this point. I also consider the possibility that Phil Connors doesn't really grow at all in the film. I secondly consider the idea that film might in some way deepen understanding of ethical experience that's in no way connected to moral growth. And I discuss the film Force Majeure and the idea that sometimes people fail to live up to their moral ideals and that this can be difficult, but accepting this is maybe uh, accepting an important fact about real moral life. I thirdly consider the possibility that film may also help people develop a deeper understanding of ethical theory and I consider the film The Third Man and how this may exemplify Aristotle's theory of when it may be ethically justified to terminate a friendship. Okay, that's all I have to say. I hope you enjoy the paper if I've been able to successfully whet the appetite and encourage you to read it. Thanks very much for listening.